Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a test-taking strategy you may want to use when you take the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, or the pre-screening Internet Delivered Computer Adaptive Test, that is the PICAT. More specifically, I'm going to show you how you can answer any equation question on the ASVAB or PICAT quickly and accurately simply by plugging in your answers. In order to accomplish that, I'm going to go through six practice test questions with you. And as it happens, those practice test questions should closely mirror what you'll see on the actual ASVAB and PICAT. Let me just say this. The ASVAB and PICAT are multiple choice tests, which means that it really doesn't matter how you solve these questions. Instead, it just matters that you get the question correct. So if you can solve equations, uh, that's great. Go ahead and do so. That said, if you get stuck on a question that says solve for X or solve for some other letter variable, you can always plug in your answer choices and get the question correct 100% of the time. In order to get the most out of this video, of course, you'll want to pause the video after I read a question, attempt to work out the question on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. As a reminder, you're not permitted to use a calculator or a reference sheet on the actual ASVAB or PICAT. So as you work your way through these practice test questions, try not to use any of those resources. Finally, I want to mention this. Uh, these questions are about as close to the real test as it gets. Uh, if you can work through these six practice test questions, you should have no issues on test day. And for that reason, I recommend that you don't spend any money on tutoring or expensive test prep resources. If you want a study guide, you could go to your library and check one out for free. Otherwise, I think they cost about $15 on Amazon. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. All right, this first one says if x plus one equals three, then x equals. Let me just say this, I know this question is very easy and the vast majority of you can solve it without having to do too much work whatsoever. That said, I want to introduce the idea of plugging in your answer choices using an easy question. Uh, that way, when we get to the more difficult questions later on in this video, you'll have the concept down. All right, so again, uh, we have the equation x plus 1 equaling 3, and we want to know what value of x makes this a true statement. Well, one strategy you can use is simply to plug in your answer choices. So let's start with a. We can see that a says 4, which means that we're going to let x equal 4. And what are we going to do with that value of 4? We're going to plug it into our original equation, notably x plus 1 equals 3. And if this makes a true mathematical statement, then we know that a is correct. If it doesn't make a true mathematical statement, then we know a is incorrect. All right, so again, a says let x equal 4, so we're going to go ahead and plug that in right here. This becomes 4 plus 1 equals 3. 4 plus 1 is 5. Does 5 equal 3? It does not. Therefore, you know A is not correct. All right, let's plug in B now. We can see B is 3, which means that we're going to let X equal 3. And we're going to plug that into our original equation right here, notably X plus 1 equals 3. Again, substitute 3 in for X. This becomes 3 plus 1 equals 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Does 4 equal 3? It does not. Therefore, you know B is not correct. All right, let's test C out now. C says uh, 2. So that means X equals 2. And we're going to be plugging that into our original equation. Notably, X plus 1 equals 3. Uh, for X, we're going to substitute 2 in. So this becomes 2 plus 1 equals 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. Does 3 equal 3? It does. That is a true mathematical statement. Therefore, you know C is the correct answer. So one thing you want to take away 
from plugging in the answers is this. Whichever one makes a true mathematical statement is the correct answer. Those that don't make true mathematical statements are incorrect. All right, so that was an easy problem. Let's go ahead and move on to a slightly more challenging question now. All right, so number two says, if x over five plus six equals negative 14, then x equals what? So it's important to realize that we're plugging in our answer choices rather than solving equations. So with that said, let's go ahead and start by plugging in our answer choice A. A says uh, 10. And of course, we're going to be plugging that 10 into our original equation, x over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14. And if this makes a true mathematical statement, we'll know it's correct. And of course, uh, A being 10 means you're going to let x equal 10. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in 10 for x in our original equation. This becomes 10 over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14. 10 divided by 5 is simply 2 plus 6 equals negative 14. 2 plus 6 is 8. Does 8 equal negative 14? It does not. Therefore, we know A is not correct. Let's go ahead and plug in B. B says to let X equal 100. And of course, we're going to be plugging that into our original equation. X over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14. Let's go ahead and substitute 100 in for X. This becomes 100 over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14. 100 divided by 5, you should know, is 20, so this becomes 20 plus 6 equals negative 14. What is 20 plus 6? That is 26 equals negative 14. Does 26 equal negative 14? It does not. That is not a true mathematical statement. Therefore, we know B is not correct. All right, let's go ahead and plug in C. C says to let X equal negative 100. And of course, we're going to be plugging that value into our original equation, notably x over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14. All right, let's plug in negative 100 for x there. This becomes negative 100 over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14. Negative 100 divided by 5 is going to be negative 20 plus 6 equals negative 14. Negative 20 plus 6 is negative 14. Does negative 14 equal negative 14? It does. That's a true mathematical statement. Therefore, we know the correct answer to number 2 is C, negative 100. Number 3 says if 4 over 3 times 3 over 4 equals 5K, then K equals. Again, we're not solving this equation. I've done that in previous videos. Instead, we're taking our answer choices. We're substituting them in, and then we're seeing which one makes a true mathematical statement. And whichever one does, we know is correct. So let's go ahead and test answer choice A. A says 1. In other words, we're going to let K equal 1. Where are we plugging that K equals 1 into? We're plugging it into this original equation here, notably 4 over 3 times 3 over 4 equals 5. K again, substitute one in for K. So this becomes four over three times three over four equals five times one. Uh, you should know that five times one is simply five. And let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, we have four over three times three over four. I'm going to work that off to the side. We have four over three times three over four. That is to say, we're multiplying two fractions together. When you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. In other words, this becomes 4 times 3 over 3 times 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. So this says 1 equals 5. Is that a true statement? It is not. And since this is not a true statement, we know A is not correct. Let's go ahead and test B now. 
uh, B says to let K equal five. Um, so we're gonna be plugging that into our original equation, notably four over three times three over four equals five K. Plug in five for K right there. This becomes four over three times three over four equals five times five. Well, we already know that four over three times three over four is one. So this says one equals five times five, which is 25. Is that a true mathematical statement? It is not, therefore we know B is not correct. All right, let's go ahead and test C now. Uh, C says to let K equal one fifth. And of course, we're gonna be plugging that into our original equation. Notably, 4 over 3 times 3 over 4 equals 5K. We already know that 4 over 3 times 3 over 4 is 1. That said, we're going to be plugging in 1 fifth for K. So this becomes 1 equals 5 times 1 over 5. All right. Uh, let's work this off to the side. We have... 5 times 1 over 5. That is to say we're multiplying a whole number, notably 5, by a fraction. One thing you can do to make this math a little bit easier is to rewrite 5 as a fraction by placing it over 1. Now we're multiplying 5 over 1 times 1 over 5. And when you multiply two fractions, you simply just multiply straight across. So this becomes 5 times 1 over 1 times 5. 5 times 1 is 5, 1 times 5 is 5, 5 over 5 is simply 1. So this is 1 equals 1. Is that a true mathematical statement? It is, and because it's true, we know C is the correct answer for that one. So uh, number 4 says if 25 equals 4x minus 7, then x equals. Again, we're going to use our answer choices to figure this one out rather than solving this equation the old-fashioned way. So A says let X equal four. And we're gonna be plugging that into the original equation, 25 equals four X minus seven. Again, substitute four in for X. This becomes 25 equals four times four minus seven. 25 equals four times four is 16, of course, minus seven. Uh, 25 equals 16 minus 7 is going to be 9. Does 25 equal 9? It does not. Therefore, we know A is not correct. All right, let's plug in B now. Uh, B says to let X be 8. And of course, we're going to be plugging that into the equation that was given. Notably, 25 equals 4X minus 7. Let's go ahead and substitute 8 in right there. This becomes 25 equals 4 times 8 minus 7. 25 equals 4 times 8, you should know, is 32 minus 7. 25 equals, what is 32 minus 7? 32 minus 7 is going to be 25. Does 25 equal 25? It does. That is a true mathematical statement. Therefore, we know B is the correct answer. All right, so that is that one. And as you can see, if you know how to plug in your answers, uh, the only thing you really have to do is add, subtract, multiply, and divide in order to get these correct. You don't have to know how to solve equations per se. All right, so number five says, if two to the X equals 32, then what is the value of X? All right, let's solve this one by plugging in our answers. And of course, A says to let X equal three. We're going to be plugging that into our original equation here. We have two to the x equals 32. Let's plug in three for x. This becomes two to the third equals 32. What is two to the third? That's the same thing as two multiplied by itself three times. And what does that equal? Well, two times two is four. Four times two is eight. So this says eight equals 32. Is that a true mathematical statement? It is not. Therefore, we know A is not correct. Let's go ahead and plug in uh, 4 for X now. 
And of course, we're plugging that into our original equation. Substitute that in for x. This becomes 2 to the fourth equals 32. Well, what is 2 to the fourth? 2 to the fourth is the same thing as 2 multiplied by itself four times. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And we want to know if that equals 32. Well, let's work this out. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 times 2 is 16. So this is 16 equals 32. Is that a true mathematical statement? It is not. Therefore, I know B is not correct. C says X equals 5. So let's go ahead and plug that in and test it. We have 2 to the X equals 32. And we're going to let X equal 5 now. So let's substitute that in. This becomes 2 to the 5th equals 32. Well, what does 2 to the 5th mean? 2 to the 5th means you have 2 multiplied by itself. Five times. We want to see if that equals 32. Well, let's work this out. We have 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So this says 32 equals 32. Is that a true mathematical statement? It is. And because it is, we know C is correct. All right. So number 6 says if 4x squared equals 16, then x equals so as we've done for all the problems in this video, we're going to plug in our answer choices and see which of those makes a true mathematical statement. Uh, C says uh, we're going to let X equal four. And the reason I'm starting with C is this. I know I'm going to take X and square it. And I really don't want to do that with a very big number like 20 or 12 if I don't have to. So that's the reason I'm starting with C. Um, C says to let X equal four. And of course, we're plugging that into our original equation, 4x squared equals 16. Substitute 4 in for x. This becomes 4 times 4 squared equals 16. Uh, 4 squared is the same thing as 4 times 4. So this becomes 4 times 4 times 4 is 16 equals 16. What is 4 times 16? Well, if you can't do that in your head, you could always do it off to the side like this. Uh, 6 times 4 is 24, carry a 2. 1 times 4 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So this says 64 equals 16. Is that a true mathematical statement? It is not. Therefore, you know C is not correct. Let's check D real quick. Uh, D says to let X equal 2. And of course, we're plugging that into our equation. 4X squared equals 16. Again, substitute two in for x, this becomes four times two squared equals 16. Two squared is the same thing as two times two, which is four. So this becomes four times four equals 16. Four times four is 16. Does 16 equal 16? Yes, that's a true mathematical statement. Therefore, you know D is the correct answer. All right, so that is it for this video. As always, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comment section below. And as usual, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, since the ASVAB and PiCat are multiple choice tests, you do not have to show your work when you solve the questions. Instead, you just have to answer the questions correctly. And for that reason, you can answer any equation question simply by plugging your answers in. If you want to help my channel out, please consider doing one of two things. You can always subscribe to it. And two, uh, you're more than welcome to share links to my videos on social media, including on Facebook and Twitter. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.